Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I come to you with another paper talking about Linux and unikernels. This paper is from the upcoming Eurosys 2020 conference. Now I've done a few videos that look at this design space of how to construct unikernels and lightweight fast virtual machines, the design trade-offs between unikernels and virtual machines, and why you want to build unikernels out of Linux. I'll make a playlist of all these videos so that you can see the design space that is explored by these various options. The paper we're looking at today presents yet another solution for how to build an application-specific unikernel but on top of Linux. And the authors do it in a slightly different way compared to some of the papers we've looked at in the past. They rely on two main techniques. The first one is specializing the kernel options, and the second one is eliminating system call overhead. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. Before we do that, just a little bit of background very quickly. With the prevalence of cloud offerings, there has been a lot of work put into making virtual machines more lightweight so that they consume lesser resources in terms of CPU and RAM, and they can boot up faster so that you can get quicker response times out of them. And solutions like LightVM and Amazon's Firecracker have tried to do exactly that. These are both papers that I've covered in videos in the past. So what is a unikernel? A unikernel is a statically linked application along with its operating system so that your machine boots straight into your application and this combination of the application and the operating system is highly specialized to that specific application. So you cut away everything that the application doesn't need and this makes it very small and very fast. The tension here is with making this general. You want to pick an application and construct a unikernel out of it so that you get the performance benefits, but you don't want to spend a lot of time and development effort to do this specialization. Most applications are fairly complex and will depend on at least some subset of POSIX-like semantics. And then you want to start with a general POSIX-like kernel. Building that kind of general functionality from scratch is a huge effort. You really want to leverage all the community effort that goes into building a general purpose kernel like Linux, but then still want to specialize it for your specific application. The authors here are proposing something called Lupine Linux, which tries to get the best of both worlds. You start with an application that runs on top of Linux, but then specialize the application plus the Linux kernel to get something very, very close to a unikernel with all the excess baggage cut away. And they do this with two specific techniques. The first one is to specialize the Linux kernel so that you cut away all the parts of functionality that your application doesn't need. And the second technique is to eliminate system call overhead by simply running the entire application in kernel mode itself. This does away with the context switching between user mode and kernel mode when doing system calls. And the way they specialize the kernel is by leveraging the kernel's existing config mechanism. The Linux kernel has about 16,000 configuration options which control all manner of its functionality. When you're building a specialized unikernel, you can cut away a lot of these configuration options and really slim down your kernel. Almost half of these options have to do with hardware and device drivers. Now, obviously, you're not going to need those if you're building a unikernel to run inside a virtual machine. Now, the authors here have built a very basic set of configuration options that specifically targets Amazon's Firecracker VM. Because they know what exactly this VM supports and needs, they can specifically pick the options just for that. And this brings them down to just about 280 kernel configuration items. On top of that basic configuration, depending on the application for which they're trying to build a unikernel for, they can even pick and choose options that omit certain system calls. This slims down the kernel even further. 
So that slims down the kernel. Secondly, they use KML or kernel mode Linux. And this is a patch to Linux which allows processes to run in kernel mode instead of user mode. This totally does away with the system call overhead because most of that overhead goes into switching between user mode and kernel mode. The key advantage of this approach is that unlike other ways to build unikernels, this approach does not restrict the set of applications that you can build a unikernel out of. If your application can run on Linux, then you can build a unikernel out of it. You don't need to even change the source code of your application. Here's a look at some popular applications and how many kernel options they required on top of the base kernel options. And you can see, for example, Nginx required only 13. More importantly, if you look at things like popular language runtimes like Go or Python or the Java runtime, they required no additional options on top of the base configuration. You might ask, how did they pick these options? And this was more of a manual process. They ran the application on top of the base config, saw what broke, and then added the configuration options to fix that. If you know what you're doing, this should be a fairly quick process. And this certainly beats specializing your application to build a unikernel out of it. All right, so let's look at some simple benchmarks. The authors compared Lupine Linux against Amazon's Firecracker Micro VM and a few POSIX-like unikernels, and they found that it beat Micro VM in image size, boot time, and memory footprint. Image size was as small as four megabytes. It booted in around 23 milliseconds, and the memory footprint was just around 20 megabytes. Overall, application performance was much faster as well. Here's a graph of the image size for a simple Hello World application. And you can see micro VMs are around 16 megabytes, but Lupine is only around four. And there's also a fairly big difference comparing micro VM and Lupine when it comes to boot times. But the most important thing really is overall application performance. And you see that with applications like Redis and Nginx, performance gains a 15% to 33% when compared to Amazon's micro VM approach. So that was a quick look at Lupine, which was a pure Linux system that can be specialized to build application-specific unikernels. I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.